Hello and welcome. Today I want to help you out and today I prepare a video where I'm gonna give you a couple of helpful tips that might improve your campaign in pretty much every Dark Elf faction. It's not groundbreaking tips, so if you're an experienced player, most likely you won't find anything here. But who knows? If I did manage to help you, I mean, I'm always happy to read comments. So, yeah. But without further ado, here we go. In almost every scenario, post-battle loot, you should go for slaves. Because they give you multiple options. You can spend it on money, you can spend it on building, you can spend it on whatever you want. And money is just money. So almost in every case, post-battle, pick up slaves. Same goes for occupying settlements. You either want to sack it and then uh, occupy or just loot and occupy so you get the juicy number of slaves. Slaves are essential for your campaigns and you can do multiple things that will just make your life super easy compared to you know this situation so slaves all the way most of dark elves lord have a situation like this where it's turn one uh, it's turn one. I got the first settlement. And I have barracks to my disposal right away. And it's a decent situation because in Hellebron situation, uh, you should do this. Definitely should this. Maybe not right away because sometimes it's better wait to reduce the numbers of slaves. But yeah, go ahead and recruit two uh, masters right away. Two masters on a turn two, pretty much. It's such a boost for army, every army. Two reliable heroes are great. And you have option to like do this as well, like boom. Turn one. I can recruit as Halebron witch elves. They're cheap they're cheaper than anything else which is nice but also they're they're quite good they're naked ladies but they can do quite a lot of damage you just need to watch out on arrows and magic and other stuff but mo and but yeah let's recruit and now i don't need barracks because fuck ball throwers and boom. I am Cain's instrument. I'll recruit Grove. I'll build Grove here. Boom. Next turn, I'm gonna have Witch Elves. And I'm gonna have my Death Hag I started with and two Masters. This is already like these four units gonna be like a mini fist that will pierce through anything on a battlefield because they're gonna be way way better than anything else and if you get region for these guys oh my god they're gonna be so good What's they the are going to be so good so on the start of campaign make sure you can get barracks up to tier two so of course if you can because if you don't start with the settlement on tier two which happens where a couple of lords like Rakaf. Rakaf don't don't start with uh, tier two, I think. Yeah, he's on tier one for no reason whatsoever. But yeah, whoever you can, for sure, Malekith can do. Rakaf can do. I think Morati can do with that as well. So two heroes, two masters at the start will be a massive, massive boost for your army. Also. When you choose uh, 
masters, make sure they're the good ones, right? Like get get yourself the discipline, get yourself mal malish, uh, malice. There? Yeah, fleet footed, maybe not. Word. What's their name? Jeez. I think spiteful. Yeah, spiteful is the name. Uh, so make sure, if you can, save yourself some good heroes. But spiteful, increase melee attack and weapon strength for entire army. So if, for instance, if you go for Celebron, she is most likely going to use quite a lot of melee infantry. So spiteful hero will be a massive boost. Discipline and spiteful hero, that's already plus five to your entire army from two heroes. So consider that as a quite quite a nice, nice boost. So if you don't roll out a good hero, let's say you started a campaign, you don't have saved heroes and you find a nice one hero, but the second one sucks. I'd say start again, but save that, that good one. So next uh, campaign you're gonna start it, you're gonna have at least one pusher. So yeah, definitely pay attention and get yourself a massive boost for your army on a turn one. Dark Elves have pretty good heroes and it's at least at the start of campaign, it's quite easy to acquire some of them. But you should not be feared to build like a Shrine of Cain purely for Dev Hag and Assassin. You're gonna get like, if you start the campaign and you build this, that's why you should collect slaves. You can instantly like build one of these and get yourself two of each. And even if you're not gonna uh, you know, put it into your army. You should recruit all the heroes you can because capacity sometimes can vary. And once you get the heroes, and you maybe don't need the building units from the building, just de delete the remove building. But at least you get four units. And every, I think every except the wizard, every uh, dark elf hero is designed to kill. And they're really good at it, especially versus like lords or single entities. They do a lot of damage. It's not that I tell you you have to do it, but I highly recommend getting at the start of campaign or whenever you start leveling any lord is get the root marcher and dreaded slaver. Casualties capture post battle, uh, it's up to 15%, which means you're gonna get 25 actually. Wow. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, 25. That's 25% extra slaves. I highly recommend that because it's all about slaves, and more slaves you have, more shenanigans. It's not a cheese, but you can do so much more shenanigans by like building instantly stuff. Let's say you have rebellion in settlement, you build walls instantly pop up, boom. Your settlement will be way more tougher to, to, to get, or even, you know, you auto-resolve the rebellion. So a dreaded slaver is absolute must, in my opinion, even for wizard. I mean, wizards, to be honest, for wizard lord, which is not... What I did with like Shadow Wizard, I got the Melkov, I got uh, Penumbula, Pendulum, on rank 1. Okay, so I have like AoE spell. And then I went for Dreaded Slaver, because every battle will give me more slaves than it uh, normally would do, which will increase potential for my entire campaign. Slaves are way to go. Um, I, I just cannot say it multi enough times. Slaves, slaves, slaves.
enslave everyone. Trust me, you're going to benefit from it. Darker lords and masters heroes have a name of power. Choose a name of power that improves something. Lord have option two. Improves own combat skills. Improves lord's army. And influence the province in which lord standing or the faction as a whole. There is multiple things and I'm not going to tell you what, what you should pick. I'm picking army pretty much always because I prefer my current army to be strong as it is. But that's my personal choice. It's something I do not like tell you what to do. She got this. Shades and Dark Riders armor upkeep reduction. I went for this because upkeep reduction is always good. No, no, no. That's not it. However, what I recommend is a little bit safe scamming here because Angel you can roll dragon. terrible po uh, power and would be too nice to do it. If you do it on legendary, then after a battle, roll it. Use like for masters, martial name, martial name of a power. Use it. If it doesn't knock, uh, like end up good, switch, uh, load it and switch again. Masters have a couple of great I think this one, Frenzy, Hunger, and Weapon Strength is, is really, really good Beast. for me. And Hydra Blood. I prefer these because Dark Elves don't really have options to heal like heroes. So I prefer them being really healing themselves. There is like physical resistance, like 50 or 20%, 15 or 20%. There's most offend there most of them are offensive, but Hydra Blood and Submit Blood Scourge are the one that provide some replenishment healing during combat, which highly recommend going for it. Uh, wait. When it when I choose for darker uh, black arcs also have the name of power that improves stuff, but they have only for Lord and Army. And that's what I got. Barbstone gives ammunition 40%, range 5%, and missile strength 10%. So, it's pretty good. It's more than pretty good. It's freaking amazing. So, if, like I said, if it doesn't roll good, roll it again. Just don't, don't agree on, on mediocre or crap. You should have better, you deserve better, just fish for it. On whatever campaign you're going to play as Dark Elf, I highly recommend doing Sacrifice to Matla because Black Arcs are super good. Of course, if you're in the middle of a continent, then, then they won't be that, that useful, but you can recruit them anyway because they don't occupy your supply lines. So the Lord itself is going to be quite cheap. To maintain and you will start progressing his growth so you can get like this this prison wing is pretty much one of the most uh, important it's it's actually the most important as uh, from economical uh, point of view because it generates slaves if you fight in a circle of influence from black arcs you get much more money much more uh, slaves so this one is always something i i focus on the first to get extra slaves so i have passive slave income so they're like very useful except that i recommend building whatever whatever army you're going to pick it's focused building on it so you reduce upkeep on those units uh, Sadly, those buildings does not increase capacity of heroes. But once you get your upkeep reduction, go for abilities. Black Arc abilities can be improved twice. But this one 
Uh, of course, growth is, is very important. Uh, recruit rank, yeah, if you need it, but this one is the most important if you struggle a little bit with money at the start and, and slaves. After all, this uh, right cost normally 800. I think there's some others that have cheaper, but 800 slaves. So you do, do want to regain that eventually. Since we talked about Black Arcs, you may wonder how the hell you can use it effectively. In a field battle, obviously, you use it in a blob. Uh, cane Flail, Lash, whatever, it's, it takes 4 seconds to cast, so it's the fastest, so you can cast it actually on a unit, you know, while moving or something. The other two, like the Cauldron and Rain, yeah, they take way way longer to cast but there is option where AI won't move it one when they target you and shoot but I noticed that recently they actually stopped shooting and move and two uh, yeah obviously when they're in blob because they they won't move and that's number three when they're on a barricade and something is running through them It's not going to do like some, you know, crazy amount of damage. I mean, it, it, it will do some damage for sure. But don't expect miracles after all. However, you have, you know, direct hit. You can like predict it and be sure it will actually hit it. So it's, it's like safe bet. It's, it's just value. It's pure efficiency and value. So, just make sure they're docked, because docked units don't like to move for some reason, and they will just eat it up. Okay, let me show you one more. See, you doing, you can do so much damage to them by just, and they will eat it because, yeah, of course you can save it for in case situation when they blow up, but I rather use it on something that doesn't move and get value right away rather than hope for something better because yeah, hope uh, well, you can hope for it, but you might end up battle without using everything. And cooldown saved is cooldown lost in the end. If you're looking for super powerful unit, I recommend shades. Shades can be built on tier 2. Settlement. Like here. You get that. It burn. It builds up only 2 turns in, in like province that is friend, I mean, good climate. It costs like 250 slaves. I, I don't know, in, in Malakif on Malekith turn 2, I was recruiting already Shades. That's how uh, easy you can get it. And I did it on turn 2 because I want to save some uh, slaves on it. But Shades are super reliable. They're very powerful. Their missile strength is really, really good. And they will perform way better. Than dark shards. I mean, you could get dark shards with uh, with shields that are quite good, 
but shades have stock so and they their combat potential is higher way higher than than darker dark shards of course they cost double well not double they cost like 50 no, no, 80 gold more but you pay for quality so you can either go for mass or for quality I'm a person who prefers having quality over quantity, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. Shades are extremely good unit to put it on uh, black, arc, you know, uh, black arcs, because usually when you fight at a sea, there is like, sometimes it's a square, empty place. It's barren. It's so empty, so... You have shooting face instantly, right? Whatever whatever you have, it will be visible and they will come for you. Boom. But Murderous Lord. if you have situation like here when I have only Lord visible and all my shades are hidden, you can... They also have Vanguard deployment as far as I remember. You can deploy multiple places and like shoot artillery from from the back you can you can do so much more so shades a way to go at least for black arcs yes. or something more typical army it's fine right it could work but i recommend highly uh, shades for black arc unit but also i'm not saying doom stack it okay i'm not saying spam the fuck out of it you don't have to but if you do it won't hurt you you will benefit from it greatly. But that's just my opinion. If you don't want to like spam them, get yourself a couple. You can complement them with like dark shards, artillery piece, some melee infantry, some monsters. But if you do mix like I did here, monsters plus something to shoot, shades are way to go. Because sometimes, I mean, monsters are visible. But shades not, so you can make uh, an ambush to surprise and shoot some units. Otherwise, magic will devastate you. Because obviously, enemy lord will always focus on your units that are not single entities, but multiple uh, entities uh, units. So they're gonna do so much damage. But if, same goes for menace belows, if you have shades and you go against rats and menace below will spawn on your lord on the monster stuff like this so all your shooting units are safe think about that you don't have to spam i did spam because that's that's the best i could recruit because i can have like yeah Yeah, they cost 126 at the moment because the black arc. So other units gonna cost me like 113 this cost. Yeah, they're gonna cost around 100 gold less. So for not the massive difference, I would say go for shades. And if you upgrade them with these two, which is reload times, weapon strength, speed ammunition and range they gonna be like whew, they gonna smack everything of course their best enemy is armor so if you fight against armor units they're gonna eat it alive dark elves research they have quite a lot of research to do and it takes shit ton of time to research something from here like it it's gonna take like forever this is nice so yeah it's gonna take forever which means you need a help research rate you can get from mm, wizard buildings that they increase research rate basic uh, on Four percent. If you get the tier five building, a tower of dark sorcery, you get eight percent. But hey, 
eight percent is still not really much and you would have to like yeah you would have to build shit ton of them that's that's one of the main problems here but what you can do is get yourself uh, some hero action so i recommend use sorcerers as an agent and do steel technology steel technology will give you uh, around 25 to 30 something like that and obviously it, it will yeah it, it can vary it, it it won't do you can cut off like one turn if you have two sorcerers i think and you do something with them but yeah, more you have, better for you. You need to find yourself enemies or just people that My you will do agent destroyed. action. The problem is, you use capacity of sorcerer to get research. That's why, Sorcery. usually my lords are wizards, sorcerers. I don't get uh, anything from... I don't get bad lords. Or Beastmasters often because I go for source supreme sorcerers so I can use the hero sorcerers purely on agent action this is like the way of balancing out so if you want to research uh, you can easily get it I think Wait, uh, as far I remember, yeah, uh, Hellebron does not start with Sorcerer, so you do need to kind of rush if you want to have a wizard in Hellebron army, but any other I think have, uh, have wizard already inside the army as a starter, so you can, like, if you get tier 3, you can build this, Recruit Sorcerer because there's plus one, so which means you have capacity of two available. Same goes for Masters, same goes for Draft Hags and Assassins. So if you start with one, you can recruit another one and do some agent actions. It's not gonna be a lot, but well, there is not much ways of doing it, unfortunately. So this is this is official. I mean, efficient. Uh, it's a really efficient way to like do it. I'm checking if they have some kind of. Hmm. No, no research. Sadly, no research. So yeah, use heroes to do some agent action, and then you can cut it a turn. Yeah, turn if you have two wizards for sure. But if you want to have more, then yeah, you need a lot of agent actions. And that's it from me today. I hope it was useful. I hope it, it helped you out. If there is something I missed, leave a comment. I might, I might do part two. But for now, thank you for watching. Till the next time, take care and bye bye.